here we are. Let's talk about play and and some of your research. Maybe a little um a, a little bit of uh history of play because uh I I imagine it's it's one of those things. Oh, so what one of my one of my best friends, Peter McGraw, he got into humor researcher, uh, or, or he got into humor research um, some years ago, and uh, one of the things that I've seen him struggle with is getting academia to take humor research <laughs> seriously, <laughs> simply because he's studying comedy. Comedy is this funny thing; it doesn't get taken seriously. What what is the what's the point in studying why we laugh or what makes us laugh? And and I imagine the same sort of thing is easy to dismiss when we see adolescent mammals um, jumping about in a playful way and we go, oh, that's just some ridiculous behavior. That's that's not as important as tackling the predator or, or, or tackling the prey or running from the predator and and probably doesn't um, get uh, taken it quite as seriously. Oh, that's absolutely true. And uh, uh, I've uh, been concerned about that uh, when talking with uh, biologists, trying to get them interested in play. Uh, well, there are several things. First of all, until recently, almost everybody said play just occurs in some mammals, uh, lots of young mammals, and maybe some birds. But other than that, it's not part of the animal kingdom. Uh, and since most biologists are interested in sort of general processes that, you know, pervade all of life, uh, then play doesn't seem to be it's just a marginal thing only found in some smart animals and so on. Um, and then also play being sort of not important or frivolous or fun, uh, therefore means it's not a serious scientific subject. And although scientists might balk at admitting that that's why they haven't been very interested in uh, in play, but that's certainly the case. Uh, take evolutionary psychology, which is, I know, an area that you're interested in. You look at most of the evolutionary psychology books, uh, you find virtually no treatment of play in evolutionary psychology tech textbooks. Uh, the one I've used and the last time I uh, taught the course le- uh, this, this spring um, co- called uh, The Evolution of Human Behavior, play isn't even in the index. And uh, I sort of talk about play quite a bit in that, in that class. And it's a good textbook, uh, but you can go through, and I don't want to mention names, but uh, uh, play has been very much neglected in uh, in much of the uh, the evolution psychology literature, they like to focus on sex. They like to focus on you know a mating and jealousy and fighting and crime, uh, serious subjects, uh, but not on those things that actually may be more critical, uh, in my view, to how we evolved as a, as a species and have features like cooperation and fair play and. Uh, Meta communication, a lot of things that I think we learn and other species learn um, in their interact with each other is through play. Mm-hmm. Learning to read signals, how to respond, and and this sorts of uh, a thing. Yeah, you, usually um, the the stuff that gets highlighted within evolutionary psychology that's close to play would be kind of. Um, categorized under, say, a, a courtship behavior like dance or something like that, or or sports are 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 uh, some kind of status recognition sort of thing. But it that kind of tends to neglect um, uh, why, say, juveniles like uh, oh, kids are maybe playing like cops and robbers or jumping around and playing the floor is lava. Or so th- those sorts of things aren't talked about as much. Yeah, I think that uh, it, part of the problem is that people just uh, don't know how to approach play. And because there's been few studies until recently that actually show definitively adaptive functions of playing. 
So there's been a search and uh, arguments for years on what is the function of play? Why do animals play as if there's a single function? And one of the ideas of well, it's, it's uh, practicing instincts for adulthood or uh, it's learning social skills or it's, there's been lots of uh, proposed benefits of play, uh, but very little uh, evidence, definitive evidence, uh, until recently. And uh, now what we're finding is that there are lots of different kinds of play. It's a very heterogeneous category. And that uh, a play may have no functions or uh, several functions or uh, in one type of play might have a certain kind of function and a different kind of play may have a different type of function. And so is there's no simple answer. And so again, uh, we're now making pretty good progress into uh, some of the functions of play uh, involving, you know, uh, aiding courtship behavior and reproduction, or uh, aiding in um, learning certain types of, of, of skills or how to interact socially, but or to uh, buffer oneself against uh, stress. That's one of the things I think we're going to find out more and more that uh, uh, kids and uh, animals that engage in uh, playful interaction, vigorous playful interactions, uh, are uh, more able to uh, resist stressful uh, events. And uh, mm. people have noted the correlation between increasing levels of depression and so on in young people. Uh, uh, and mm. mental uh, problems that this may be exasperated by the fact that uh, there's so little outdoor physical recreational play that they can get themselves immersed into. And, uh, you know, mm. parents are afraid of the kids getting injured or, uh, you know, dangers being outside and so on. Plus, we have the, uh, you know, the, the cell phone and the video games and uh, which, again, uh, have certain advantages, uh, but they are very uh, addictive and very much take kids from sort of interacting with each other socially as well as outdoors and, uh, and physical activity.